morning. Thanks for joining me. Fred in Alaska. Uh, it's a, that's ah, about 20 degrees out. <laughs> out just uh, playing a little bit in the local gravel pit, ripping around, you know, whatever. Anyway, so before I get too cold here, uh, let me share with you what Samantha and Richard shares with us. So, uh, approximately 10 years ago, <laughs> Richard's uncle, he has a small little gold claim down by Hope. And, uh, you know, that, that place has a long lineage of gold mining, gold panning, and all that kind of stuff. And it also has a lineage of hairy man experiences. So, what ended up happening is, is they came up uh, from, uh, I believe it was Wisconsin area. And... They came up, they were newly married, uh, you know, the, the uncle said, hey, come up, you know, stash you some gold, get you a little nest egg, you know, getting your family started, and, you know, Richard and Samantha obliged. They come up with no knowledge of Alaska, uh, only postcards and, you know, Nat Geo shit and Discovery Channel stuff. And so, you know, they were amazed at the beauty. Oh, jeez. Hold on one second here. Sorry about that. Uh, I forgot to turn off my ringer, and it is what it is, but, um... So Samantha and Richard, they came up, and his uncle's operation uh, was real small. You know, he, he was, you know, kind of, uh, he had a, a pump that he would spray the bank and loosen up material and then take that material in buckets and go and sluice it. So he was basically had uh, Samantha and Richard just being worker bees and collecting buckets of material for him to run through the sluice and they get a percentage. So that's how, that's how they had it lined up. And again, this is about a decade ago. And so, at one of the trips, they were going back and forth together. Uh, you know, they had the pump running and other, you know, machinery going and stuff to where they weren't too afraid of bears. But uh, I guess uh, Samantha had just watched Grizzly Man, so bears were really got her freaked out, you know. And so, you know, Richard being understanding and it being new to him as well, uh, they had a camp shotgun. So Richard would had that slung over his back and on this one particular trip uh they had made about three or four that morning and they on their next trip back they were going to spray the bank some more and collect some more material at this you know this uh, particular location well once they get to drop off the buckets uh richard's uncle needs a hand with one of the mechanisms that he was working with as far as this loose box there was a some kind of hinged leg or something that was acting up kept collapsing and, and messing things up. So Richard was helping him with that. And Samantha figured, okay, you know, it, she was a little more comfortable. She said, I'll go and, you know, get at least one more bucket of the material that's still left there or whatever while you guys are messing with that. So thinking nothing of it, she heads off by herself. And it's approximately about 150, 200 yards to this particular location to get the, get the bucket fill. And she's carrying this five gallon bucket. And she said, as she was walking along, the highest bank was off to her left hand side as she's walking in. She said it was about six foot in elevation above her. Uh, the overburden, the trees and stuff hadn't been pushed back there, but where they were uh, spraying the bank, the overburden had been pushed back about a hundred yards or something like that. So as she's going along, there's basically a six foot bank to her left, about 20 feet away. And it's six foot in elevation above her. And there's still trees there, you know, willows and, and spruce and, and what have you. And it was pretty dense. Um, <laughs> and from her field of view, she's kind of looking up. And she keeps hearing this weird kind of grunt sound. But she heard something similar when her husband, Richard, was scooping water. And the bucket would kind of rub against the gravel at the bottom of the water in this by this little creek. It would make this oh, kind of sound. So she attributed the grunting she heard to that and wasn't feeling weird until she got uh she said about 50 feet from where uh their shovels were were stuck in the ground from when they were filling up the buckets she said she got the weirdest feeling and she thought richard was sneaking up behind her because she felt a presence she couldn't pinpoint at the moment but she turned around saying ah you, you can't scare me or whatever thinking it was her husband richard well nothing was there and she was like, wow, I feel like I'm being watched. So she said that's when the hair stood up on her neck and on her arms. And she was looking around and she's studying the trees and bears came flooding back into her mind. 
And so she drops the bucket, hauls ass back, right? She said as she's running, she's now got the bank off to her right-hand side, approximately 20 feet away and six foot in elevation. But she heard a couple limbs breaking as she's running along. She gets back to where Richard and his uncle are and they had just fixed what they're dealing with. So she stopped and, and she didn't know what to say because um, she felt a little silly being freaked out, but she didn't, she didn't see anything. She kind of thought she heard the branches breaking. So she wasn't, she was dismissing it. She was reasoning it away. So Richard asked, well, geez, you look like you saw a ghost. Are you okay? You know, just kind of joking around. She goes, well, I, I thought you were behind me. I felt a presence. And he was like, oh, it's probably a bear. You just wait here. We'll go together. Finishes doing whatever. And so he grabs buckets that he was carrying and he follows her and she leads the way. And Richard said, as they're walking along, she kept, Samantha kept looking over towards the trees, look, kept looking over towards the trees and he kind of chuckled and was like, you scared of those bears still? You know, there are probably none around here and started laying out every reason why the bears wouldn't be around with all the noise and this and that. And that's when she tells him, hey, I, I felt like I was being watched and I felt real uncomfortable and that's why I ran back. And so he was like, really? So he decides, he sets the buckets down when they get over by where their shovels were. And he was like, okay, well, I'm gonna walk up up onto the bank there and I'm gonna take a look around. And if I see anything, you know, I'll run it off, you know, give her peace of mind. So as he's doing that, he gets out of her field of view. And she said, as she was standing there by the shovels across the creek to her left, there's another higher bank that goes up and kind of pushes up into the small finger valley that they were near. And she just, her attention kept getting drawn off to her left and she kept looking, but she wasn't seeing anything, right? And so she was just like, man, it's the damnedest feeling. I feel like I'm being watched. And a few moments later, Richard comes back down the bank and he goes, I, I'm not seeing anything. I, you know, nothing out of, out of the ordinary. Well, down where they were at, there's a lot of moss and tundra and mixed within the trees, right? Just like a lot of places around here. So there, he, he couldn't make out any tracks and let's, this, you know, like Richard said, he was not a tracker. He's not from Alaska. He's not an outdoorsy guy. They were here to make a little nest egg of, you know, make a little profit doing the gold thing with his uncle. So he, he really wasn't uh, an outdoorsman that could recognize track sign and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, he, he just chalked it up. But Samantha lets him know, hey, I keep getting a feeling from across over there, something watching me. And he goes, okay, well... I'm going to stand with my back that direction. I'm going to talk to you and you just pretend to look at me, but look over my shoulder and look around. Right. And she thought it was odd. She was like, where do you get this idea? And he goes, well, let's just see if, if someone's watching us, they think we're talking, maybe they'll move thinking you're not watching. You know, it was like, she went along with it. And so she had to kind of back up the little hill a little ways because Richard was much taller than her just to see over his shoulder because at first he was just blocking the whole way. Yeah, you know what I mean? So she backed up a couple steps up onto this little rise and she's looking, she's about even with Richard at this point and she's looking over his shoulder and at one point she thought she saw movement and then she, she kind of came forward a couple steps because she, you know, she was a few steps away from Richard and she's like right over there and he turns around, she's pointing. He's not seeing the movement in the area that she had seen it and she was trying to point out that there's a small tree next to a, a small looking pine tree that looked like a christmas tree and the movement was in between there right so she keeps trying to explain them and understand for richard's sake here there's several spots along that opposite bank that match her description so he's like be more specific so she picks up a rock and she chucks it across the way there in the direction that she's talking about because she was flustered well she threw it pretty good because the distance was approximately you know 30 35 yards and the way she threw the rock it hit and took a good bounce or two and then slid and was literally in the direction she wanted to point so she was like yes you know she was stoked and she pointed out to richard c in that direction between that tree and that tree and he starts looking and he's got the shotgun slung over his shoulder. They're, they're there to fill up some more buckets, right? And he's looking and he's he sees movement, but it's it's blending in. It's almost like the shadows were moving, but he couldn't make out an outline. He couldn't make out anything. It just looked like shadows were moving in between the trees. This is 
in the morning hours this the sun's up uh you know there it, it's not like it's dark time or dusk or for you know real early in the morning where you know it's you know really dark in the trees there's there's shadowing but it's not like uh it, it's not dark enough to where he shouldn't make out something right and so he's kind of bewildered by it and he can't make anything out so he dismisses it he goes look it's just a shadow moving and she's looking and she goes that that's a guy over there now he's looking in between the two trees where he saw the shadow initially well she's looking past that about 10 15 feet where the trees get denser and he starts looking again and sure enough he sees the, the figure of a dude and he's like hey hey starts yelling hey you know you're on private property you know you're not supposed to be over here you go to your own claim he thought it was one of the neighbor miners just kind of peeking in to see if they're getting any good you know pay dirt or whatever so he he immediately chalked it up to a creep so he you know that that creek they're drawing water from and stuff wasn't all that deep and he had on hip boots so he starts walking across yelling at this guy right once he clears the water, Richard said that everything changed. When he was coming at this thing aggressively and crossed that water, that water threshold, he said the woods where this thing was standing exploded with noise. Uh, he said that one of the trees that it was like kind of between, it reached out and snapped it, right? While I was looking at him, snapped it. And then the thing stood up, right? So this thing was squatted down and it reached out and broke a tree. He said that tree had to have been eight foot tall. So this thing stood up and now understand he, this thing was on a little bit of a rise. It wasn't just on level ground with Richard. So when it did stand up, it was towering way over him. He had covered about 20 yards of that 35 yard distance across there. So he is literally looking up at this thing and he said it was massive. Uh, once it broke the tree and stood up, it ripped off the top of that tree and threw it at Richard, right? Now, he said when he threw it, it was more like a lazy toss, but it was very accurate because it landed right at his feet and kind of knocked him forward a little bit. He immediately jumps up, starts backing away. He's trying to unsling the, sh uh, the, unsling the shotgun because he's got it purse style around, right? <laughs> As he's doing that, this thing starts walking off to Richard's left and going kind of up up the hill back up towards this you know out into this little finger valley that they were you know where this creek was coming out of and he didn't know what to do uh richard uh said he wet himself uh was it was so spontaneous it, it wasn't like uh you know i'm scared i'm gonna pee he said it was totally involuntary it just happened right well he starts backing away unslinging the shotgun and this thing he lost sight of it so immediately him and Samantha, they take off. Now, when they take off running, he's still fumbling with the shotgun, trying to make sure it's loaded. Uh, they had a couple of rubber bullets before it got into slugs, right? So he's popping those out and trying to hold on to them as he's running. He finally, he, he was so uncoordinated because he was so spooked and freaked out. He just dropped those and slid a, a slug into the chamber and put it on safety. Samantha's behind him. He's much taller, so he immediately got the jump on her when he took off running. He he caught himself and stopped. Samantha was about 10 paces behind him. As he turns around to look back behind where by where the shovels were, uh, he's seen this thing squatted down, just kind of just kind of watching. And he said it had an ashen gray face. Uh, it its eyes were real real big but dark. He couldn't make out any whites of the eyes. He said the hair looked almost pitch black uh, and it was basically a big mass. Uh, because of Samantha obscuring his, uh, his vision of totally viewing this thing, because uh, she was running at him, you know what I mean? And he couldn't get a full visual. He immediately let her pass him and then turned around and started running behind her. He said as they were going along, they still had a good 100 yards through this brush to get to the clearing where his uncle was doing the sluicing. He said he heard off to his right hand side just crack, crashing and breaking. When they got up to where his uncle was, he turned around and he raised the shotgun because it sounded like it was right on top of him. And when he did that, his uncle was like, hey, 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 don't shoot, don't shoot, don't shoot. And, and Richard's like, there's a, there's a monster, it's chasing us. And his uncle continues to say, don't shoot, don't shoot, don't shoot. 
and his uncle comes over and he's trying to calm Richard down and he's looking in the direction Richard is. Richard said that this thing had looked like it crawled up into a better viewing position. It was almost like doing a push-up to look over the little berm off to their left-hand side where they were where they were looking to get a look at them. And his uncle was dumbfounded. He was like, "What the, f you know, what the fuck is that?" So they're both standing there and they're having this kind of a Mexican standoff type deal where Richard's looking and pointing the shock, and this thing's just yeah. Richard said that this thing just looked genuinely curious, was just kind of doing the head back and forth, side to side, like a dog would, but looking at him. And as they're doing that, as, as he said, it seemed like time stood still. He said he heard nothing his uncle was saying at that moment. And I guess his uncle, according to what Samantha was saying, was telling him, don't point a gun at it. Don't point a gun at it. I don't know what it is, but don't point a gun. It looks like a man. So Samantha was already on the other side of the sluice box, kind of squatted down, looking at everything unfolding in front of her. She said that once Richard lowered the gun just a little bit, this thing stood up turned came down onto the trail and then took back off going the direction they just came from running down the trail this time just right in plain view of everyone runs off so they're all stood there just stuck like what the hell is going on right well <laughs> there's this guy about 15 minutes later because where the sluice was set up was near the road and this particular guy coming by a little while later always stopped in to check on Richard's uncle. He pulls in and they're all still shook. Uh, Richard was smoking a cigarette with his uncle. There, He was telling them everything that happened. And this guy that came into their little camp came over to talk to his uncle and, and kind of overheard. And he, you know, his, his uncle starts explaining to the guy what just happened. And the guy was like, oh, oh, you know, we call him the big one. And everyone was blown away. And he's, what do you mean the big one? He goes, that's, that's the biggest one of the group. And they're up and down and through here. You know, just be aware. You leave them alone, they just kind of watch and throw stuff every once in a while. You leave them alone, they'll leave you alone kind of kind of thing. Well, immediately, uh, Richard's like, hey, bullshit, it threw a piece of fucking tree at me. You know, it was stalking my wife. You know, what do you mean, it'll leave you alone? You know, that kind of, he took that tone with the guy. And the guy was like, look, it, just leave it alone, it'll leave you alone. They, they, weren't, they weren't accepting that. You know what I mean? So, uh, long story short, as far as them packing up and leaving, they they stopped. They made it uh, not not very many days. Just just a just a few days. They made it doing that with their uncle until this incident happened. And you know they were just getting the hang of it from what they were saying. Um, the uncle was still nice enough to share. Uh, God bless him. Uh, he's since passed, but he was nice enough to share the gains from while they were there and uh you know i want to thank uh richard and samantha for sharing that and again this is down in the hope area um you know there's there's a lot of people that have these experiences out there uh like john from the video yesterday or the last video uh, the interview you know it, it's almost like once it's like finding waldo you know where's waldo you you spot him in those little in those little puzzle books and stuff but once you figure out what waldo really looks like you kind of easily pick them out as you go through you know what i mean and it's almost like that uh once you see one of these things it, it almost makes it easier to see them i don't know it's kind of weird but anyway just an observation uh i want to thank them again uh i want to thank you guys for joining me and i'm gonna get in out of the cold let me show you where i am here it's uh see, i'm underneath that which that's never good um let's see Patrick's pass is oh right over there sorry the camera was tilted Hatcher's pass is back over there that would be lazy mountain uh piner peak is going to be back in through there and sunrise as you can see the that little line in the clouds there they're already trying to spray us with something but uh yeah I'm here just uh, ripping around the gravel pit. As you can see, uh, the moon's still out there. Thanks for joining me, and we'll catch you guys on the next one.